gentlemen, this is Mr. Workman, and I'm going to take you through how to use a graphing program called Graphical Analysis. Um, you are in the process of completing your paleontological study in horse evolution activity, and I'm sure uh, you recognize that you need to put together a graph for that. Um, and this right here, this software, this is an icon, icon for um, graphical analysis, this particular application is a fairly easy one to use. And any of the science computers at Downers Grove South um, have this particular program, and you will use this quite a lot in your chemistry classes next year, so it might actually be a good idea for you to learn how to use it. So all I'm doing here right now is just uh, double-clicking on that icon uh, that should be on the desktop of any computer. And uh, when you do that, what you're presented with here is a, a convenient T-chart. Obviously, you know, your first column is for your X values and your second column is for your Y values. Um, and what I'm going to do is just start entering numbers here. Um, and I, I'm going to just go with the list that is given um, on page 58 in your unit booklet. And I'm just going to type in these numbers really quickly here, and bear with me while I do that. <clears throat> and as you can see, as I'm putting these values in, a line is developing across the screen here on this graph. Uh, but we're going to have to do some a couple of things to modify this graph, because the way I asked that you set it up, uh, is uh, time flowing from left to right, and so we're going to need to reverse the axis um, orientation on this, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. <clears throat> okay, so I'm typing in these values, and I'm going to then show you how to label your axes, which of course you need to do on any good graph. Your axes are labeled, so the reader of the graph knows what it is you are um, graphing. All right, so those are my numbers. And a couple of things I need to do here, I'm going to double click on, uh, if you see where my cross here is, and this arrow down here now near where the X label is, I'm going to double click on that. Uh, actually, I'm going to right click on that and um, look at column options. And I'm going to go, um, excuse me, graph options. And then if you look at axis options, I'm actually going to go down here. This little box is x-axis. And instead of auto scale, I'm going to choose manual. And um, our time range here on this particular graph is from 60 million years ago to present. So what I'm going to actually do is maybe on the left-hand side go with a 70, and on the right-hand side go to a 0 and click Done, and what that's done is it's reversed my uh, sequence of numbers from highest numbers on the left to lowest numbers on the right, and we need to do that for this graph. The other thing I'm going to do is label my um, axes, and I could have labeled the x-axis and y-axis in that uh, screen that I had before, but what I'm going to do here is just hover over the x, and you see this little yellow window comes up that says double-click to edit column. I'm going to double-click that, and right here, um, I can name the x-axis. And the x-axis, of course, is time in this instance. And the short name can be the same. Um, and the units is in millions of years ago. So we're going to do um, MYA for the units. Um, and on, in uh, my label here, I'm also going to put in millions of years. Go, and I'm going to hit done and what we see here is that time and then MYA is up here at the top of this column and it also appears at the bottom of the graph here so uh, on the Y axis I need to label that so I'm going to double click on my Y and this column options comes up and the name on this of course is going to be size of teeth <clears throat> and you can see that um, in the data list on page 58 in your unit booklets. I'm going to type in CM for units and hit done. And there's the appearance of the axis label there, and it's also on my column heading. The other thing I'm going to do here is um, click on my graph. I'm actually double click on the graph, and what you get is, again, the axis options. 
Um, I'm not going to change anything in, anything more in the access options. You can see the data that I entered down here in this field uh, previously. Um, in graph options, I need to title this graph. So we need to think about what this is, all right? Um, you know, a good title, of course, is going to have um, a description of what the two uh, axes are um, doing relative to one another. So, you know, sometimes you can just title the graph your X label versus your Y label, or your Y label versus your X label, um, depending on how you want to phrase the words. But I'm going to um, make a descriptive title here, something like um, size of teeth from Eohippus to Equus. And, you know, this is a descriptive title showing a trend of teeth size increase. Um, and that's exactly what I'm describing here in my title. So the next thing we need to do here is go ahead and print this. And you have a variety of options. Um, but one thing I do want you to do is, so I know that you did this graph, under printing options, I don't know if you saw me do that, I'll go back under the file menu under printing options, I want you to print the footer and I want to make sure that you enter your name here. And this is simply because I want to make sure that you've done this graph and you haven't just copied it from somebody else. Um, so I'm going to put in my name. My name is Jamie Workman. And uh, make sure that this date uh, box is selected so I know when you did this graph. I'm going to hit OK. And just to make sure that it's going to be there, I'm going to hit Print Preview. And this is the way it's going to appear. The data will appear here on the page, and the graph will appear here. Uh, you can see that there's a title. You can see that the axes are labeled, and this is my overall trend. And of course, at the bottom is my name, the time and date that I'm doing this graph. And I can just hit Print and choose the particular printer, and there it is. Now we 